All right, so we're yeah, a little past halfway through, a little bit more than halfway through. Now, and we heard a lot of complex things, very hard. Complex or very hard. I don't know what to do. Now it's time to go back into the real world, make your life a little bit easier. <laughs> and I promise today is going to be really nice. I'm not even going to have groups acting on things. Today, I'm just going to introduce a couple, a couple of uh, geometries, or extend a couple of geometries, change some geometries. Still Lorentzian, but look at them in a different way than you might, than we have before. So today is a really easy day. We're just going to talk about. It. All right, so, all right, so let's start with the Euclidean example. Euclidean's the wrong word. Um, that, yeah, yeah, okay, the Euclidean's the right word. Okay, so how do you get a one-point compactification of Rn? Well, there's lots of ways. I mean, a, a, a conformal compactification. Uh, let's say, let's, let's make it conformal, right? Okay, one of them is to consider R n plus 1 comma 1. So it's Lorentzian, right? So Lorentzian, because Lorentzian geometry is the mother of all geometries, as John already knows, even in his complex world. OK? Um, and you have the standard inner product. All right? Um, and we can write it like this, too. Oh, shoot. I always do that. OK, we can write it like this. Here, I've got I to gotta come down in front. OK, and then we'll look at the null cone, right? So maybe I'll draw a picture now. Now I'll come, go back up. I'm very, uh, very disturbed today. So we look at the null cone. Now, this is where I'm going up into higher dimensions, so it is Thursday. It is the right Thursday, after all. OK, it's every other Thursday. You've got to worry about which Thursday you're on. OK, and you can find the Riemann sphere, the conformal compactification of Rn. Um, this is by taking the projection of the normal cone. OK? All right. So um, these points, by the way, I'm, I'm, uh, later on I'm going to do this. We can either write them with a little, uh, to, to, to do the projection, projective geometry. Um, we'll either write them with the, uh, with the parentheses around a vector, not too much this vector, or we'll write them in homogeneous coordinates, which is just with the brackets and the colons. And you notice that you can multiply by a number anytime you want. Okay. All right. OK, so let's embed Rn into this Sn. That, that's an Sn, by the way. Why is that an Sn? Because, well, if it's the null cone and it's, and it's all these other ones, right, you have v1 squared plus v2 squared plus v3 minus v3, vn plus 1 squared. You can put the vn plus 1 squared on the right. And multiplying by a particular number, you can get it equal to 1. So multiplying by the number is just finding a representation for my point. OK? So this is the way I'm going to embed it. First of all, I'm going to screw up my metric. I'm going to not use the metric that I have been using before. I'm not going to use the standard metric. I'm going to use this other metric, which is 1's along the diagonal, and then negative 1 half, negative 1 half, right? All right, and I will show you explicitly that, that this is actually, by change of variables, this, this is actually the right, this is actually equivalent to this metric, um, but later in a different context, but you'll see how it is. But certainly you can type determinant and you can find the eigenvalues, and there's one eigenvalue of one and one eigenvalue of negative one. It's not so hard. Okay, and this is the way I'm going to embed it. This, the x here, is a vector. This is Rn, right? This is I'm, I'm living in a higher space. I'm I'm really being weird for me because I'm a low-dimensional sort of guy. Okay, I'm an x, and then I'm going to take the inner product with itself and one. Certainly works, right? You can put it in there. Is that a good embedding? Well, things should be con 
I, I use the word conformal, and by the way, I hate that word. Quasi-conformal just freaks me out. <laughs> but conformal, I don't like too much either. Okay? But is it conformal? Is that, is that obvious that it's conformal to everyone, or, or do we want to talk about it? Do we, it's obvious? Maybe it's obvious. I mean, certainly when you're multiplying by matrices, you've done that before, but maybe you want to worry about whether that's a conformal embedding or not. Whether, well, let's take it. Let's, let's worry about, let's take two paths, right? Through a point A plus TV, uh, what's, what's P plus TV? Uh, let's use U plus TV, and U plus uh, TW. All right. What are those mapped to? Where's that stupid thing? Oh, that's right. Okay. They're embedded into, they're mapped to U plus TV. U plus TV dot U plus TV. One. The other one, not so surprising, is U plus TW. Uh, U plus TW dot U plus TW, one. And then let's do the multiplication because we can. Because I said it would be a nice and easy day. We should all have fun, sit back, smoke whatever you got. Okay, and I've got two two t u v u dot v, and I've got plus t squared v squared, and I've got the same thing down here. I don't have to do it again. All right. Well, how am I going to find what what does conformal mean? It means keeping angles the same. I want to know what the what what's the vector at that point, and oh no. I'm going to do something that John and I hate in this world. I'm going to take a derivative. OK? dt of this, and I'm going to evaluate it at t equals 0. OK? So this vector turns out to be v, 0. And the only thing that survives is the 2, u dot v. All right? Down here. The same thing, right, d dt at t dot t equals 0. Same one, right? It's uh, u, uh, no, it's w, 2t, uh, 2 uw, 0. All right? Now take the inner product. Well, I'm using this inner product, right? I'm using this weird, the, the wacky one. Sorry, maybe I'm not going to do that today. I'm using this wacky inner product right here, that inner product. Take the inner product between this one, let's call this A and B, right? What's A dot, A dot B? Well, let's use the brackets because the dots are going to be my Euclidean one. But what is, on the first n variables, it's just the regular dot product, right? So it's u dot v. And uh, what happens otherwise? That's 0, because it's, it's, it's the cross, right? It's 0 times 2 and 0 times that. Well, that's great. That's not the angle, though. OK? I'm going to I have to, that's the dot product. That's, I don't know what that is. But that, what's the angle? I have to worry about the norm of these things. So what's the norm of this vector A? OK. Well, if you think about it, we'll just put it into your little, your little thing again. OK. And it's also going to be just V dot V, so it's OK. We're, we're, we're happy, happier than Larks. OK. So it's v dot v also, and this is w dot v. I don't know what v dot w. So it actually turns out to be a conformal map, right? This is a conformal embedding. And it all is just the inner product works, right? So it's a really nice way of writing these things. OK. 
There's a point missed, though. There's one point missed, and that's the, the point which has a zero on the last, on the last coordinate, right? Zero, one, zero, one, zero, right? We've got every other point except for that one. Okay, we don't, you can't have zeros, but zero, it's not zero. So, um, we're, uh, so that's going to be, a, that's our infinity, right? So this is going to be infinity, that point that we always add. All right, so maybe I won't do this next slide because um, it looks just too complicated for me. Um, except to say uh, on leaves, on plus one comma one leaves this, the, the, uh, the <coughs> uh, leaves invariant the, the null, null cone. And PON plus 1 is a set of conformal automorphisms of SN, okay? which, we, which you know in different contexts. These are just nice ways of looking at the formulas, of seeing how to do. If I wanted to have a Euclidean similarity, if I want to do, uh, since it's conformal, I should think about conformal maps, right? And all of these, it's not hard to check that these formulas give you the ones that are in. They're, they're all in PON, uh, ON plus one comma one. All right. Okay, so they're nice little formulas to do. You can check it. It's a nice, nice, nice exercise to check that it works. Okay. All right. So, um, well, there's an inversion in the sphere, right? What's the inversion in the sphere? Well, we've done, people have been talking about it. Everyone's been talking about inversions, I think. Francois has done some inversions. Every, everyone loves a good inversion in the sphere. The way I'm going to invert in the sphere is I'm going to hit it with this matrix zero uh, with the identity, and then I'm going to flip the other two, right? Okay, and you can see what happens, right? You just flip them. You flip these two, right? That's what the last part does. And that's, what is it, what is it equivalent to? Well, let's take a number and Dot, dot it with itself, divide by it. And you can see something that's within the, inside the unit sphere gets mapped outside the unit sphere. If it's on the unit sphere, the dot product's one, so it stays there, right? So it's all good. Everyone's happy. It's all in the same line. Okay. Um, again, where does the origin go to? The origin goes to infinity, that, that, that infinity that we talked about before. Okay, this is all review. Everyone's, everyone's happy. We're all feeling good because this is what we lived on, what we grew up on when we were wee lads and lasses. All right, so what should we do? We should do this same process with the Lorentzian group, with, the Lorentzian, with, with R21 or Rn1 as you want because we're being very general today. Okay, so we're going to embed it into what did we what how do what did we embed it R n into R n plus one comma one so I'm going to add one to my plus eigen uh, plus pluses and one to my minuses right so I'm going to embed it into into R n plus one comma two I even got that number right okay and just like before, I'm going to use a nice inner product. There's the standard inner product that I can write, but the nice inner product. I'm going to write everything in this nice inner product with the basis with this, and it's going to be, it looks just like the other one. There's our, plus, there's our n pluses, there's our one minus, there's the, the other plus and minus are in this one. Okay. All right, and there, when you dot product with itself, when you inner product with itself, I should say, you get this sort of thing, right? V2, V3, right? That's what, the one half because you get two, two copies of V2, V3. All right. And you look at the null cone, just like we did before. We're looking at the null cone, and the projectivization of the null cone is, the, is, is uh, what we call the Einstein universe. Okay? I'm, and by the way, this is me. This is just me crappy notation. I'll tell you, no, I don't think anybody else except me, maybe Bill occasionally, but even he's getting sick of it too. But um, I think it's I just n plus one sometimes or just I n plus one. Just, just 
just to say Ein three, because you are Einstein is implying the signature is n one. You got one negative and n plus. So the physicists will just put the no, the total dimension up there. Certainly. Okay. And we do the same darn thing. I love to do the same thing over and over again. It makes me joyously happy. Okay? I can I, I do it again. I did it once. I can do it again. And I'm going to embed it this way exactly like I did before. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take the vector just like I did before. I'm going to put the dot product, and I'm going to put one on the bottom. And for the same reasons of all this, it's a conformal embedding also. It's not going to change anything. Nothing's going to change here. So the question is, what are we getting? Do we get one point? Do we get more than one point? I don't know. We'll have to see. Well, maybe I do know, but all right. Here are the transformations. They're, they're looking much like the other transformations. OK. And the inversion in the unit sphere. Now, remember, what's the unit sphere here, by the way? The unit sphere here is not R, it's Rn plus 1. So the unit sphere, when we're doing inversion in the unit sphere, this is for Rn plus 1. That's the unit sphere, right? That's when the inner product with itself is 1. And that's going to be exactly what you're doing, what's going to be fixed by this, for the same reasons why it was fixed before, because of that formula that we had before. OK. All right. And you'll see that in uh, Rn plus 1, you have this nice, this nice, this inversion with it just flipping the two gives you the same sort of thing that we had before. It's not nothing different. I think I just copied and pasted all these slides. The only difference here, and I have to say the difference and write the difference, is that dot doesn't mean, the dot doesn't mean, uh, where's the dot? Right there. The dot's there and the dot's here. The dot doesn't, doesn't mean a regular Euclidean inner product. It means my Lorentzian inner product. It's the n and the 1. But what's going to happen if you're the null vector? Oh, well, let's figure that out. We're going to figure this out. That's what we're going to talk about, right? Um, yeah, we're, we're compactifying everything. Everything's going to be compactified. We're going to have a, it's all going to be, you know, because what, what, what's really going on here, right, is that every point, like the ni nice thing about the null cone is who cares about what direction? Every point looks the same. It's, a, it's homogeneous, whatever. It's beautiful, right? It's homogeneous space, right? Null cone. So every point looks the same to, 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 this, to the Lorentzian metric. Right, so the Lorentzian inner product. So no point's different. When we add a point, whatever points we add, they're going to be equivalent to any other point, whether it's going to be time and, and space-like or time-like or whatever. It's all the same. OK, so let's see what's happening. OK, okay so. No, that, that is not what this is the Einstein universe. This is the conformal compactification of the flat space. We'll get to anti de Sitter later. That's the negatively curved space. Anti de Sitter is different than, than the, the Einstein universe. There is relationships before this, and we'll talk about what those relationships are. But they're not the same. This is, this is just the, and I'll show you the, the picture that I've seen, I, I saw a couple times in a physics talks, and you might have seen it in like a, a magazine every once in a while, you know. Uh, where they talk about it. So look at what happens to the origin. Okay? Okay, so let's see what we do here. So we take the inversion in the origin and it flips the zero and the one to zero. And that point never gets hit by that embedding. The embedding is always blah, 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 you know, x dot product one. That point is not hit. That point is called the improper point, or I should say somebody called it the improper point. I'm not sure who called it the improper point. But as you'll see, I think we should change the name. And I'm, I'm into this. <laughs> People have taught me to change names. 
now, or at least let, uh, to, uh, to campaign for them. I think we should call it destiny. <laughs> and you'll see, and maybe it'll have a child and we'll call it Beyonce, but that's a completely <laughs> different thing. Um, but work, I like to call it de uh, des destiny. destiny. Oh, I, in fact, I wrote it. <laughs> I, okay, I keep thinking about... Uh, <laughs> Did anybody ever see, uh, uh, what was the bad, uh, Back to the Future? Yeah. You're my density. <laughs> so, see, I, I, it's my density. It's destiny. That's a, it's supposed to be destiny. It's not, there's my typo. Sorry about that. <laughs> Maybe it's not a typo. <laughs> All right. So, there are some other uh, points. So, what was the, what, what, somebody asked me. What, what happens to null points, right? There's, there's a point on, and now look at the, remember the signature, because I'm probably going to screw this up someplace, but that's, a, that's on the null cone of your Lorentzian space, right? So its inner product with itself is zero. So we're going to get this, right? And that's a cone. You know what that is. That, that, that set of x's is that cone that we've been drawn over and over and over ad nauseum. Right? Okay? And, there, and when you do the inversion, it goes to some place that doesn't get hit. You cannot hit it. Okay? So what does that say? That somewhere out there at infinity that we didn't hit before, there's another cone of crap. Right? There's a cone of, this is a cone, right? This is, this is going to be, takes one point to another point. It's a one-to-one -one map, certainly. Okay, and it's it's moving the cone that you're used to, that your origin is looking at and saying, "Here's my here's my light cone," and it's flipping it out to to infinity. Okay, there's some other points which we are not hitting. Okay, they're not gonna we're not gonna be able, so e easily able to find out by inversion because they're not affected by inversion, and those are the points of the form where we have x. Zero, so its inner product with itself is zero and zero, okay? And because up there there's a one, but down there there's no one, so you can multiply by x, so you don't have a cone anymore, you have the projectivization of the cone. What's the projectivization of a cone? It's a sphere, right? You take, take R2, you can see it right there, you can see that sphere, right? All right, so... And it's fixed point-wise. We'll call that the ideal sphere. Okay? And that's destiny, not density. I don't even know what that word is. That's not even a real word. Okay. Okay, and here's what the picture looks like. Okay, let's think about this picture just for a while. And I, I don't like to use that after a while. This dark circle, these dark circles are my light cone. There's the origin. That's the origin. Right? And this is the this is the cone this is the light cone, right? Um, I don't know why these are different color, but these are also this is my improper point. That's what it's getting blue. And it's it's there's also a cone here, right? The red and the blue they should be the same color. The red the green and the blue should be the same color. And there's my sphere of an infinity. And what do you have at a sphere of an infinity? You're you're identifying antipodal points. So if you think about the the R21 example, you're just you're turning them, right? So you can imagine this kind of turning. So, so this going around here, this coming here, the opposite one goes to the same point, right? So that's what you're adding. The, all the stuff that's the infinity, all the stuff that's da dashed is what you're adding. These are the points that you add. It's not as simple as you might think, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a cone. It's really a cone that's glued, right? So, yeah, I would say RPN. Yeah. Yeah, you can't. I, I, I'm not going to do that because I always forget how to do that. Um, do you remember? <laughs> um, there, are, there are ways to do that. I, in fact, I'll show you a little bit of how to, how to do that in a second. Um, of how to get that. Because I'll be able to get any point on a line and then you just rotate it around there to get a line. Okay. 
Okay, so where I, I dropped things. Now, I, now I've lost things. Oh, there it is. Okay, so that's my infinity. This is my new space. So I take R, R, R21 and I add, or Rn1, and I add these points on. And now I've got every point looks the same. It's a homogeneous space, beautiful, right? But it's, but it's this weird thing, right? And we have this embedded. Now, one of these places, well, we'll talk about that. That'll, we'll talk about it that later. So. Okay, so let's first get an idea of what happens to lines. Let's start really, really easy. Let's start at lines through the origin. Okay? Okay, uh, time like line, uh, light like lines. Okay, so we're going to take a, po a point on or a direction on the thing, right? And this will be the, what do, I did the 1, 1, 1, 1 vector, one, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 vector, right? Where does that go? Well, you just do like you did, like you, all, you always would. You take, you, you look at this and you can divide by, you can let t go to infinity. You could actually divide by t. Another way to write this is just divide by t and let t to go to infinity. These two points go to one because they're the same order and this one goes to zero. All right. So what, what type of point, and, and I'm going to write these in R2 one, just be, but all of this works for any, any dimension. This is just because I, I can only write five. I just can't physically write more than that. Um, John likes to write 20 different numbers on it at a time, but I can only write, well, five. Okay, so that's an element of the ideal sphere. So if you go off in a light-like direction, you hit the idea, like we thought. That's what we thought we would do. Like points at the end would be it. That's not shocking. All right, so how about time-like lines through the origin? Okay, and there it is. The dot product with itself is, since that's the 0, 0, if you take the inner product with itself, you get 0 times 0, 0 times 0, t times, oh, but it's a negative, so it's negative t squared. All right, so what dominates that? You can divide by t squared, the highest power, right? And then all this, uh-oh, what happened to my negative one? Oh, I don't care, right? We're, we're talking projective space. But maybe we should keep that in mind. Maybe that we should keep in mind that we multiplied by that, that by negative one. Just keep that in mind for, in, a, in the future, okay? All right, so that point, oh, that's, that's, Destiny. That's that's what I, every point that I go off, I, I find a I find a time like uh, geodesic that I'm going off on, and I hit my destiny. Right? Not improper point is a crappy name. What, what's Ravi say? Oh, I named that. <laughs> you didn't name that, did you? Did you name that? Okay, good. That that, that, I, that I could be beat. <laughs> Okay, what about space-like lines? <laughs> what about space-like lines? Again, I'm just going to take the really easy case, right? I'm going to take I'm going to take a really easy case, and I'm going to take t zero zero one zero zero, just to, in like a horizontal. But it won't matter. Everything's a bit, eventually the same. And again, we do this, but we have a positive t squared t zero zero t squared one. That also goes that really, really is weird, right? So you go off, let's just think about this just for a second. I go off this way and I hit the, the destiny, and I go out that way and I hit the destiny. But when I go in between there, I hit my ideal sphere, which is really not close to destiny. I mean, if you remember the picture, the, 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 I, the, there was a cone of infinity. That improper point or destiny was the vertex at that cone of infinity, okay, which is maybe what people call it. I think, I think the now the new terminology I've heard is covert, covertex. Yeah? They're, they're, they're the same. They're the same. It's just, you know, 
Because we can change. There's a transformation, right? There is a transformation. There is an element of P O N plus 1 comma 2, right? That can take the origin to infinity, the infinity, the origin. I can move it, I can move it to any point. And then I have a different thing. I'm not going through. Now it would be lines through the origin. Where is it going to? Right? They are coming in pairs, though. There is something to be, you know, there is something that, well, two points are related because there are going to be two points which are, which are, one's, a vert one's the vertex of the cone, one's the co-vertex or destiny. It's destiny. Because destiny can change all the time by, by changing your origin, right? It, it, you, as you change the origin, you're going to change the thing, change where you, where, where you end up. All right, so let's see if I can answer Francois' question here or give you a kind of an answer. Okay, um, let's look at uh, light-like lines which are not through the origin, okay? Okay, and then that's my, I, could, I did this, and let's hopefully I did it right. I could have done it wrong. There might be a negative one here. Um, I think I did it right. Okay, well, I'll assume that I did it right. Okay. No, 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 I did it right. Okay, there I did it, and here's, oh, see, as I, cha as I change my base point, so I I'll take two lines here. So if I'll take a, uh, this is a light-like line, and if I change where it goes through, I don't necessarily end up at, destiny anymore. I'd end up at its destiny. If that was the origin, that it, I would end up at its destiny. But I'm not going to end up at the original destiny. I end up at a, po a, cone on, a point on the cone of infinity. And so you can see how you can, depending on where you, where, which direction you're going, you're going to get a whole line of these, right? You're going to get a whole line of the, those, those points. B minus C, you can change the B and the C, right? So you can get any value here. You can hit any points, any point on that line on that line at the cone of infinity. And so if you change where you're going, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, I think I think yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, right, okay. I wasn't going to do planes. I, I mean, I, I just wanted to introduce things, so, but yeah, there's all these things of what, what, what planes do, and I think, yeah. Okay. By the way, when you take a space like uh, line that's not through the origin, what happens to it? Just because of the way it's dealt with, right? You could take any any point, go off in the direction t. But it, again, I don't care. Everything's it's symmetric with respect to t. Symmetric actually, it's going to be symmetric with the place where where you go, which direction you go. You're always going to hit destiny, right? Every space-like line goes off to destiny. Improper point, co-vertex, whatever you want to call it. All right, so so that start. It's and again, there's another like like Prince always say. There's another. I'm I'm going to stop kind of here pretty soon, and I'm not going to go too much further on this in this path. But there's a whole idea of like what do what do planes do? What do half planes do? What do what do crooked planes bound? Well, next Wednesday. Virginie Charette will be talking, and she'll be talking about crooked planes and, and t groups that you can get in Einstein, the Einstein universe. Is her a title is to be, to be announced, but I, know, I have an insight for that. Because she said, what do you want me to talk about? I said, well, why don't you talk about the Einstein universe stuff? <laughs> um, she and a couple of students did some nice work in, in, um, in dealing with this. So... And it, it, it is, it's, the, the, they get really wi weird. The, the, the crooked planes are just, the, when, the, when, you, when you complete them into Einstein, the Einstein universe, it just gets a little wacky. Um, okay, so, now, what, what do we want to do? Well, I, 
personally don't like the idea of going out space-like directions and hitting the same point that I go, you know, when I go in the light, uh, time-like directions. That seems weird. So one way to get away from this is take the double cover. And, and in the double cover, instead of doing projection, instead of doing the regular full projection, you might look at the sphere of directions. I don't like that word. I'm trying to change that, too. I've got, I've got a lot of issues with words today. <laughs> Okay, I think you should, but anyway, instead of identifying points all that have any, mul any scalar multiple, only take positive multiples. And you'll get a double cover. Okay, and what you'll get is you'll get two different destinies, right? Two different infinities, a time-like infinity, right up there, and a space-like infinity. And I drew it like a, like a circle because it's a point. Think about that just for a second. I drew it like a certain. <laughs> OK. Those two points right now are the same, by the way. Those two points are the same. And all of these points are the same. Everything gets doubled. Everything gets, you, 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 there's always a negative and a positive, right? There's always, you can get it. Well, right here, this, the, you got, uh, what happens is that your light cone Light cone gets the, you get two different, you're, you're, you're uh, separating the future and the past. At least in this one, you have kind of a future and the past, although not really because you can go around, because as you go the whole way up, this line that goes right from the, that point to that point, well, that's just a circle. So that's still a time machine, and that's not, well, I've heard that it's not so bad, but I don't really like it either. You can take a universal cover, by the way, and you can do it there. Okay. Um, the area inside this triangle that I drew with like crappy draw, right? This is the worst draw I can use, like some free thing. That, that area is a copy of R n plus 1 and n comma 1, right? That we'll call it a Minkowski patch, right? Lorentzian patch, I don't want it. It's a patch. There's another patch. There's another patch out here on the outside. I, don't, I can't draw that. Because in the other patch, the space-like destiny, the space-like infinity, is the time-like one for the other patch. And this one is the space-like one for the previous patch. Right? So different universes, right? Can you get it? I, I, there are these universes, right, that you can go between. And then you can take the universal cover and just make it so that you do have some sort of time, time orientation. Right? Okay, so, so the question is, well, my first question is, what do you, what do you think the topology, well, I have the topology. How do, how do you figure out the topology of this? I claim that the topology of the double cover is Sn cross S1. Well, what did I tell you? I said, I said we're going to use this crazy metric. Don't use the crazy metric. Use the real metric, <laughs> right? In the real metric, you get uh, V1 squared plus, plus Vn squared plus Vn plus 1 minus Vn1 squared minus Vn and plus 2 squared, that's, that's on your null cone, right? OK. Well, let's, this is one of my favorite tricks. Uh, I've used this a couple times. Vn squared is equal to Vn plus 1 squared plus Vn plus 2 squared. OK. Uh, this is n. All right. You're still allowed to multiply by a positive number. So let's multiply by, let's or divide by the norm of this, the square root of this. And what you'll get is you'll get, OK, uh, uh, divide by the square root of 
Vn plus 1 squared plus Vn plus 2 squared. And so the new vectors, these are new ones, these are Vn primed plus 1 squared plus Vn plus 2 primed squared is equal to V1 prime squared plus V is equal to 1. There's your S1, right? What? This is a positive number? Oh, because it's a point, right? It's, it's, it has to be a positive number. To get this, to get, if that was zero, then that would imply, if these two were zero, then that, that would be zero too, right? So, and we're, we're not considering zero, zero is not in our, our, uni, our, our space that we're considering, okay? So this, here, this is, because after you divide by this, after you do the projectivization, the only positive projectivization, which I, okay, this turns into my copy of S1, and this curves into my copy of Sn. And you can kind of see it, right? Like I said, as I said before, right? This is, the, that, line, that point and that point are the same. You can see the S1, there, it's right there, right? And there's the Sn, right? There's a copy of Sn. Maybe, maybe that's not the right way to think about it. Okay. So here we have this very bizarre space of things that we're going to do. Okay. All right. So let's see. Where are we? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, say it again. Yeah, I think it's a, yes. Uh, no. No, no, no. It's SN. It's SN. Um. It might be Sn minus 1. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Sn minus 1. I, let me think about that for a second. I'm, I'm always screwing up the numbers. So. But, but it, both sides are n plus 1 minus 1. Yeah, so it has to, so it has to be. It's Sn. Yeah, it's Sn. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah, because there's just two. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, because I, I didn't have enough numbers up here. That's the problem. So it should have been n plus 3. That's, that's my problem, is that I should have had, this should be plus 1, 2, 3, plus 1, 2, 3, 2, and 3, uh, plus 1, 2, and 3. I know this is really important to get. Okay, I did it right the first time. Okay. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go back. We're, this is, that's kind of where I kind of want to leave uh, the Einstein universe. There's lots to think about. There's planes to think about. Um, by, oh, before we go any further, since, um, since we're dealing with, um, this is the double cover that I did, because I divided by a positive number. I didn't allow you to divide by a, no, a negative number. What do you get when you, allow, when you look at the actual Einstein universe? Well, you get you get the antipodal map, right? It's multiplication by negative one, right? You've got, you've got the Einstein, you, you've got this, this Sn cross S1 uh, mod the antipodal map. Well, it depends on whether Sn is pot, even or odd, whether you get an orientable or unorientable space. So in 2, 1, Einstein 2, 1, it's unorientable. If I did it right, I think I did it right. Okay. All right, um, so let's go. Let's go back to the big picture of, of everything, right? Let's 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 try to. I'm going to ch change the change my direction here a little bit, because I there's lots of like I said, the Einstein universe. You could spend a lot of time doing it, and we could talk a, a lot more about it. But I have a limited amount of time, and I wanted to do one other thing, because we've been talking about it in several talks. And we've been talking, and I know that Fanny's going to talk about it next week. So I want to talk about something else. And since Ravi even asked for it, whatever Ravi asked for, it, we do. Okay, let's go to. You didn't know you had that power, so. 
so we can think, let's go, let's go back to the Euclidean, or I don't know, the, anyway, the different picture, right? The, the standard picture, okay? Here was, we had hyperbolic space, po negative curvature, right? On the boundary, there was S N, N minus 1. Let's see if I can do that right. And on outside of it, we can think of it either projectively or just taking a nice slice. You've got the sphere of radius 1, which is a surface of constant curvature of radius 1. It's not the sphere. It's the quasi. I think I saw, saw last night it's quasi-sphere or something they call it. Some people call it. But it's a something of it's a manifold of curvature of curvature positive one. Okay, and we have this division of things, and the negative curvature comes from this taking taking this uh, this negative one, right? It's following this, is S N. I'm, I, I, my m n numbers are way off. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to do the same stupid thing that we did here, oh, I guess we're not calling it stupid, the same wonderful thing that we did here in the standard case, and we're going to do it now for the Lorentzian case. Okay? The negative one sphere, right, is going to be anti de Sitter space. It's the negative one cur constant curvature, negative one. Everything's homogeneous. It's beautiful, right? Right? It's bounded. This is, this is now the, the schematic picture is it's, this is ADS. This is anti de Sitter space. This is the negative curvature, right? This is, and I'm not even going to worry about dimensions. Hopefully I got it right up there. Okay, Einstein space. Oh, the Einstein space is the cone, right? That's what the Einstein space was, right? And on the outside, it's de Sitter, okay, which is the positive curvature, the Lorentzian positive curvature. Now, one of the things that bothers me all about this is that our model spaces, these are models for what, whenever you take quotients of things, these are model things. These models aren't, aren't simply connected, right? So, but we can deal with it. Life goes on. Okay. Okay, so that's the picture that we want to see. We want to see this. Anti de Sitter space, negative curvature inside the light cone. Einstein. So the boundary of Einstein, I mean, the boundary of anti de Sitter is Einstein, which is also, by the way, the boundary of the double boundary of, uh, of uh, de Sitter. Well, if you take negative. Okay. All right. So I'm not going to worry about this too much. There's, there's been some work on it. Um, uh, people believe more in anti de Sitter space. There's reasons for, for the physics to be involved. And plus, we're all negative curvature people here. I was. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you the story. It's a little snarky, and I won't tell names. <laughs> at a department that I, I was at, an analyst who was more of a geometer said of the geometers who all did analysis, but they also did positive curvature. He goes, positive curvature. Everything's a sphere. Ha! Huh. And he said it kind of derisively. And so I was talking to one of my colleagues, a lovely woman. And I, and I know she loves positive curvature. So I said, oh, I told her the story. And she goes, yeah, isn't that great? Everything's a sphere. <laughs> and so I guess whether you like certain things really does depend on what your opinion, what, what your viewpoint. And you know, my viewpoint is everything's a sphere. Uh, and her viewpoint was, yeah, everything's a sphere. So, <laughs> So let's stay away from everything's a sphere. But that's a lovely place. Maybe people like that. Maybe you should, maybe you should, I don't want to say anything. You should feel free. But I think in this room, I think we're going to the, to the not everything's a sphere. Okay. Okay, so anti de Sitter space. Okay. I'm usually really bad with things. De Sitter was, I don't know who he was, uh, what, I forget his nationality, and I, what? Dutch, that does sound right, because it's duh. 
Um, but also, I just, well, it's just it's so sad that the thing that we study more often is anti instead of the real thing, right? So I just feel it's weird. All right, so we're going to talk about the hyperboloid model of anti de Sitter space. And I put, should put quotes around the hyperboloid because I don't know what type of hyperboloid it is anymore. And we're going to look at what all the vectors in this big space in R22, right? You think about what dimension that does. That, that moves the, the, the negative thing down by one. Could go one, two, but we always put the pos more positives than negative. And so we'll p take the inner product with itself with negative one. Okay. Um, you're also going to double that, of course, because you, 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 just the same thing we did, we do, did before. It's one sheet. I think it's one sheet. Okay. There's the projective model, too, right? There's, we could take all these vectors, we could look at their inner product, just say their inner product, and we'll just write everything as, as a, uh, as this, as, we're not going to use that too much. What we're going to use, and you know, I used to look down, I used to look down and I spit on the decline model. And I have to admit, I'm getting used to it. I like it a little bit more. Okay? Lines are lines. Straight lines are straight lines. Geodesics appear as straight lines in the Klein model because you're projecting onto a, you're projecting onto a, 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 a plane. Isn't it a wonderful thing? Instead of those, which circles are where? So I like the Klein model, and it's great here. We're going to use the Klein model. The picture that we all talk about, that everyone says, oh, here's anti de Sitter space, it's the Klein model. It's taking this space and projecting the fourth, the fourth, uh, fourth thing onto v, v4 is equal to 1. Okay. You are actually missing a point, some points. You're actually missing some. I'm not going to worry about this. There's actually some identification like there was before in the Einstein manifold. So anti de Sitter space is the stuff inside, right? It's less than zero, right? We put one there, but we're going to put it less than zero. And it's in the stuff inside. anti de Sitter space is the stuff inside here. Straight lines are straight lines, right? And there's also, there's an identification. The top gets mapped to the bottom. Okay. Okay, we're happy. Okay, well, that's enough to do. Oh, well, everyone keeps saying these things. Everyone keeps saying, well, you know, it's PSL2R. What's, I don't really get that. Okay, well, let's, I guess I guess we're going to have to worry about what PSL2R is. Everyone says to me, PSL2R is, is the anti de Sitter space. Well, how do I know? How, what's the map? How do I get from one to the other? I, I don't really see it. Okay? As I said before, the 2-2, two, two, the two, two, uh, there's our, there's our uh, signature, right? You, there's our, inner, it's, it's, uh, it's not really written as an inner product because this is like the norm, right? This would be a half, it would be like two of those matrices that I had on the bottom before, right? A half, uh, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, right? Okay? And I'll do change of variables. Okay? And I'm doing it a little quick. I haven't written things as the inner product, but that's okay. We'll, we'll deal with it. Okay, and I'm going to do this change of variables. I don't know if that's the right one or, well, it's, it's, it worked for me, so I'm okay with it. And all I do is I substitute them in, and I look at it, and I multiply everything out, and I get, and because it's equal to 1, but I put it on the, I multiply both sides by negative 1, so I get x squared plus y squared minus z squared is, minus w squared is equal, to, is equal to negative 1. So that matrix, just because, you could have done it by eigenvalues too, and, and look at, everything, but you can see, by a change of variables, you can see that that inner product is just a different way of writing this, the norm that comes from a different inner product, the plus plus minus minus inner product. Okay, I will say, I'm not going to say too much about this, but um, the isometry group is you want to stay, you want to, what can you multiply a matrix by? A linear, you want it to be a linear thing, right? What can you multiply a matrix by? to an element of PSL2R to make it stay in PSL2R. Well, since it's a group, you can multiply by an element of PSL2R. You can multiply on the right 
or you can multiply on the left. Okay? And you do this nice little thing to make sure your numbers turn out right. It's a better way to write it. A, a, the element AB of PSL2 cross PSL2R is just AXB inverse. Okay. And they preserve the quadric, so you're okay. All right. So we can see that PSL2R is anti de Sitter space. Okay. Oh, let's have some fun. This will be my last thing I do. Am I that? Oh, I thought I was going to be late. So now I'm going to be early again. All right. I'm going to write, I'm going to map my element of ABCD, PSL2R, well, SL2R, I'm not going to worry about the plus or negative. And I'm going to, I, it's mapped to a point in that model x squared plus y squared minus z squared is less than 1. It's going to map down to that model by this. It's, you just solve it. You know, ask your favorite idiot to do it. Maybe you should do it by hand. It would be good for you. Oh, Pepe, do it by hand. Don't, don't, let, don't let Mathematica do it for you. I'd be ashamed of you. Okay. All right. So here's my question. So let's do something crazy. Let's, let's look at all the points that correspond. Let's take a geodesic. Let's take a geodesic in H2 because PSL2R acts on H2, right? So let's take a geodesic on H2 and let's look at all the points where there's a fixed point on the geodesic. Okay. And in fact, I'm going to want, an if it has two fixed points, I want one of them to be attracting. Okay? Pretty, pretty nice idea, right? Pretty standard thing, you might think. Francois back there, gritting his teeth on how I do, I'm doing this. But anyway, you'll like it at the end, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so that's what I want to look at. And I'm going to call that, that object C. I don't know why I'm calling it C, but I'm going to call it C. Okay. Okay. The first thing let's let's oh let's before we get it up let's put it up so I can I can use this. What's the map? Let's do the further map right here because this is I mean I, I've written it in homogeneous coordinates, but I changed it to the one here, so that's really just the x y z coordinates x squared plus y squared plus z my z squared is less than 1, right? So let's put this map in, A, B, C, maps to B plus C over A plus D. Nice, oh, trace, I like that. And of course, I'm going to miss some points. It's okay, I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, A minus D, uh, A plus D, uh, B minus C, in fact, let's just write this as, as points, B minus C over A plus D. Okay, the denominator is A plus D, the rest of them are B plus C, A minus D, and B minus C. Okay, you just multiply it. You getting excited? Because something's going to happen, and it's going to be good. Okay. Okay, so the first thing is... The identity, that's good to know. It goes to the origin. Oh, isn't that beautiful? I like that one. Okay. That's the origin. That goes to 0, 0, 0. Okay. All right. So, okay, I'm going to fix the, I'm, in fact, I'm going to be nice. I'm not going to take any uh, geodesic, any old geodesic. I'm going to pick a nice one that I have some feel for. Right? I'm going to pick, this is PSL2. This is the hyperbolic plane. And I'm going to pick the geodesic here. Okay, and I'm going to look at parabolic elements which fix infinity and zero. Okay, all right, and I do that. I I do this embedding, right? I do this map, not embedding. It's a map. Right? On the third line, it should be minus t. It should be minus t. I apologize. Ah, another typo. <laughs> I got some small ones. There, there were other ones that 
but that one I felt like it, that, that, I, that I deserved. The density was not. That was just mean. Okay, there should be one. So there's actually, it goes to two lines. Now, I haven't told you because it's a little bit, a little bit tricky to do this, but those two lines, not only are, are there two lines, they are light-like lines. Okay? So in our, in our universe, right? Let's see if I can do this right. Okay, there are, the y is constant, it's x and z, it goes like that one and that. Okay. Okay, and all I did was take the, para the parabolic elements which fix those. Okay. I've seen those crossing lines before. Crossing lines. Must I've be. Seen the C before as well. What? So you've seen the C before too? What is it? I should call it DGK, but that's, the, that's too many letters. Okay, so let's do, let's do a hyperbolic that whose attracting fixed point is infinity, something like this, right? You're not going to get anything for that missing zero. I don't care what anybody says. Um, there's, uh, that's, that's a hyperbolic. S is greater than 1. You want S greater than 1 so that it, you're attracting. Right? And, and you can have some other parameter T there. Any parameter T will do. OK? OK. And I put it into my little machinery. And I notice that it's, that it's just like this, except it's parallel to what I had before. Except it's in the x direction it's coming. Which way is it going? It's going to the positive x direction. OK? So, or positive y direction, positive y direction, sorry. So it's going. Uh, that was wrong. That was wrong of me. It's, it doesn't hit the boundary here. So it goes like this. And the downstairs goes like this until it hits. Until it hits the boundary of anti de Sitter space. It doesn't go off forever and ever. It hits the boundary of anti de Sitter space. And of course, what are you going to have on the other side? It's the same thing, different one. 1 minus s over s, where s is greater than 1 because we have it so that it's attracting 0, is that plane. Okay. I'm not even going to bother you with the next one, the next slide, to go through it. But what you ha see is that you have see something in between these two, like this. And it's following this line. And it's following that line. And this is not my construction, of course. It is Danziger, Garato, uh, and Cassell. What they recognized is that a crooked plane the circle will not be unbroken, right? We we'll have come back to the, the crooked plane. The crooked plane in anti de Sitter space are these are, are things, uh, isometries that deal with this line. They have a fixed point on this line. And they're able to get whether a lot, whether, I mean, this is going to be further than I, I want to go to. They're able to understand how these things intersect with how two lines are moved away from each other. It's really, really Shocking, right? And they get all kind of results, not looking at the ge geom that my geometry, my favorite geometry, the three-dimensional geometry, but looking at something that happens on two dimensions. Because it's all about what is happening on two dimensions. It was really, really nice. Okay? There's a, 
Danziger, when he, his, in his PhD thesis and, and since then, he was, he, one of the ways he was thinking about, one of the things he was doing was he was understanding how manifolds change as you, ch as you change. Like you could look at negative, negative one curvature, negative a half curvature, negative, and see how it changes. And so what they're seeing is that the, the flat case is really a limit of these more, more, more fertile negative curvature case. So it's really a limit of this. Okay? And here's my favorite thing, which really tells you how cool all of this is, is that at the end of my first lecture, we are talking about crooked planes, right? And what did, what did they prove? They proved that every free discrete group is bounded by 2n, plus, uh, 2N crooked, disjoint crooked planes. It is not true in anti de Sitter space. There's weird things going on. Okay? So, the future, right? This is the future. All right? And I think I will stop there. And I'm not, I don't even want to hear what, what uh, Francois wants, uh, wants how, many, how many times he wants to correct me on what I said. But anyway, I'm, anyway, that's it. <laughs>